Class is now in session. I'm Professor Hockey, and today we're discussing game 33 of the regular season between the San Jose Sharks and the Pittsburgh Penguins, in which the Sharks have lost 8 to 5. And this actually ended up being one of the more interesting games of the season thus far. And it's kind of crazy because it was just a few days ago where the Sharks played what was likely their most interesting game of the season against the Arizona Coyotes, an extremely back-and-forth game that resulted in the Sharks coming out on top with an 8-7 to shootout victory. And now here, just a few days later, the Sharks have once again brought up a very, very fun game to watch, but in an extremely different way. Because if you actually just watch the first 20 minutes of this game, and I blame zero Sharks fans who only did watch the first 20 minutes of this game, you would never think that this game would be anything more than a complete write-off from a San Jose Sharks perspective because they got absolutely demolished in the first period and found themselves down 6-1 to one after 20 minutes. The Sharks have not been destroyed at this level in the first period since their first few years as a franchise back in the early 90s. In modern NHL history, the Sharks have never, never been this destroyed as they led in six goals in the first period period with the last one coming in the dying seconds of the first it was just insane to watch how outmatched and outgunned the sharks were in that first period and yet the final score ends up being 8 to 5 a lot closer than you would think it end up being now you'll notice that this video is a lot shorter than my usual reviews because i also ended up doing this same thing that I do not blame any other Sharks fans for doing. I did not turn off the game, but usually with most Sharks games, or pretty much all Sharks games, I'm pretty attentively looking at the screen and trying to evaluate how specific players are looking, but by the time that this game ended up being 6-1 at the first intermission, I kept the game on, but I wasn't super intently watching how specific players were actually looking. And so for today's video, I will not be doing any specific look-ins at the vast majority of the Sharks roster. I can tell you that players like Couture and Meyer ended up looking very good there in that third period. They ended up loading up on the top line as a couture meyer hurdle trio, and that line came very close to being able to tie this game and also generated a couple of goals, both coming from Logan Couture. But in terms of specifics, I won't be able to get into it here in this video. But there are still two things that I do want to talk about. And the first one does have to be the Sharks' relief goaltender in this game, Zach Sachenko. So this is a very interesting decision and a decision that I 100% support from Bob Booner. Obviously, I've been very critical of the Sharks' head coach over these past couple of days, talking about him pretty heavily and critically in my previous review, talking about how he uh, sent that message to Timo Meyer in the overtime against the Flyers and how he ended up benching Helbega Watts or healthy scratching him prior to that game against the Flyers, and I wasn't very happy with that decision, but I am happy with his decision of how he handled Zach Sachenko. Because obviously, your team, your goaltender has let in four goals in the first six minutes of the game. For most teams, that would be a very, very easy signal to just pull the goaltender. But if Aiden Hill was the backup for tonight's game, I assume that Reimer would have been pulled much earlier on, probably even when the Sharks fell down 3-0. But because the Sharks were running with a rookie goaltender who had never started a game in his NHL career, which did not exist up to this point, the Sharks actually decide to stick with Reimer for this first period. And like I said, a decision I 100% support from Bob Booner because it's clear that the Sharks were not ready to start this first period. They're on a road trip. They had just spent multiple weeks in California, in San Jose, with many, many home games. And now they're playing a 1 p.m. game. It's obviously no excuse for how the Sharks started. There's zero excuse for any team ever to let in six goals in the first period. But what I am saying is that the Sharks clearly looked completely out of it in that first period. And so there's no reason to send Sachenko a rookie goaltender to the Wolves in that first period. So they say, you know what, Reimer, just ride it out. They end up letting in the six goals. And then at the start of the second period, when the Sharks are given that opportunity to reset in the first intermission and maybe settle things down a bit, that's when they decide to put in Sachenko. And usually when a team is getting absolutely destroyed, they'll sometimes put in their backup goaltender. And that backup goaltender will end up making seven saves out of seven shots in relief in the last 10 minutes of a third period. And those shots will come 
come from you know center ice not even from inside the zone and people will say hey he did pretty good in relief but that was not the case here with Zach Sachenko because in the last 40 minutes of this game while the Sharks did indeed outscore the Penguins at least on a man net four to one and almost made the comeback here in this game this didn't necessarily mean that the sharks were completely dominant in the second and third period it is actually the opposite this was a very competitive game in the second and third periods it was the penguins who just completely dominated them in the first but the second and third actually looked like an competitive NHL game and yet they managed to outscore them thanks in part and in huge part to the heroic performances from the Sharks rookie goaltender Zach Sawchenko. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't want to pump his tires so much. This is not suddenly the future of San Jose Sharks goaltending, the hero that the Sharks need between the pipes. I wouldn't go so far as to say that. When I was watching Sachenko's game, there were still some issues that I noticed technically with how he played this game. And there were a couple of close calls where I said, well, if the picked, the Penguins player you know, hit the net here instead of missing it, that would have been a goal because he had his off angle. Or he got a bit lucky on that particular save. But in the end, he faced off against a lot of chances a lot of shots and he only let in this one goal on the power play was perfect at even strength so a very impressive relief performance from Zach Sachenko. the second thing that I do want to talk about in this game is the heart that the Sharks put into this game at the end of the first period I, t I mentioned earlier that the first intermission was a chance to reset and try and get back not necessarily competitively in this game but at least to stop the bleeding in this one and just kind of finish this one off and it would have been so easy because of just how this game ended up scheduling itself being a afternoon game after the Sharks had just spent multiple weeks at home it would have been so easy for the Sharks to just hang their heads stem the bleeding a bit not fall behind too hard and then end up losing at something like seven one or seven two and moving on to the game in a couple days against the Detroit Red Wings but this Sharks team does not give up and I've mentioned this many times in the past the Sharks have multiple times this season actually tried to stage a comeback and a few times they have been successful a couple of times they've come very close but just didn't have that extra gear and that was the case here tonight but the fact that they were trailing 6-1 in this game and then managed to make it 6-1 Five at a point was extremely impressive if you told me at the end of the first period at the first intermission where I kind of just gave up on the Sharks to be honest if you told me that in about an hour and an hour and a half I would be standing in front of my television sweating out the last few minutes of this game I would not have believed you but that ended up being the case here very impressive that the Sharks managed to come back now this doesn't excuse obviously the fact that the Sharks did have that completely awful historically awful first period and fell behind 6-1 but it does show off the heart that this, this team does indeed had like I said it would have been so easy to just write this one off and leave with a pretty embarrassing scoreline but the fact that they made it close was very nice to see but that will do it for this review the Sharks will be back in action on Tuesday where they will take on the Detroit Red Wings the Sharks will obviously be looking to have a significantly better start than they had here today and hopefully they can take some of the momentum that you could say they generated at the end of this game in this almost come back against the Pittsburgh Penguins and bring it into that one and hope to get a victory. Class dismissed.